Whoa, we're gonna need a bigger bot. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. So, I'm going to NHRL in the September meet, and it is actually not going to be very much longer after you see this video that I will be there and fighting the Melty Brain, which there will be a new build video out for the Melty Brain, probably right before the stream for NHRL, so I'll remind you again then, and I'll probably put links to the stream in the description of that video, but while I am there, I have an incredible opportunity. Uh, Tom, who builds Positively Hysterical, the brilliant cat bot at NHRL, which has had a wide variety of weird and wonderful and interesting weaponry, has given me a fantastic opportunity to build a mini bot for Paws, for Paws's fights, which I am honestly excited about. The fact that Paws and Squeak kind of had squeaky hammers around the same time is just phenomenal to me. I love that robot and I am just excited to have the opportunity to run a mini bot for Paws of Deville Hysterical. And originally I was just going to put in Squeak here, however, uh, the NHRL league that we're going into is the three pound league. This version of Squeak uh, couldn't even survive the Plastic League here at home. There is no way it's surviving any length of time in the box at NHRL. So today, we are going to do a better, bigger, more reliable Squeak. And to get started on that, we are actually going to look at the hammer mechanism. So, Squeak, obviously the main key point of the design is... The Squeak. Uh, so we need to make sure that we can actually do that in a way that will survive the three pound league, which I think means TPU whistles. Now, I don't actually know if this is gonna work. So this here is the generic whistle that I've been running on things like Squeak for a little while. It works pretty well. Uh, and it is just literally a print I took from online. Uh, it was just one on Thingiverse, I think in the original Squeak video. I linked it, if I can find the link again, I will link it again. Uh, this one, is the same design printed in TPU so it can bend and flex all over the place and thankfully it works. Uh, it is a slightly different pitch I think because the sharpness inside the whistle section is just not quite there on a TPU print but this is going to survive being hit. Well it will be if we can uh, print kind of thicker walls on the outside without interrupting the squeak too much because, yeah, this, at the moment, is very wobbly around the opening where the air goes through. And when you bend it while blowing into it, which, uh, sorry, your ears are going to uh, get a lot of noise if you're listening to this on headphones. That is bending it back and forth like this while blowing into it. So if it bends out too far, the air misses the uh, engagement point and you don't get a whistle. So I want to put some extra down the sides just to kind of shore that up. Uh, and then, yeah, hopefully that still works. But the other thing we're going to do is we're going to print a whole test chassis because we're going to build basically a one pound plastic ant here. And... Yeah. I built a one pound plastic ant before. Uh, for those of you who have been around the channel for a little while, I built the cattle bot, a one pound plastic ant for William Osman. Uh, it did not go particularly well, and uh, as far as I can tell, he never actually ended up using it for anything, despite the fact that I did indeed give it to him. Uh, so this is only going to be my second ever plastic ant, so I need to do lots of prototypes. This is the first prototype together. Uh, we've got a whistle, we've got a gigantic gear, because buried right in the base down here, there is a brushless motor. I was thinking we could try out a brushless hammer swing on this, which would just be really, really cool. And then I've got wheels, I think, off of an old RC car. I actually can't work it out. I thought they were Lego wheels, but I've been digging through kind of Lego forums and things, and like Lego lists of uh, tires and stuff, and I cannot find anything like these. So I think uh, I pulled them off something else, and not something Lego. Uh, but yeah, we've got a brushless hammer on here, which this was just a very quick kind of mock-up, well, I say quick, the chassis print 
was like eight hours long, and then the hammer was another additional time limb by uh, like a couple of hours. It takes time to do um, things. But also, the chassis does have additional walls around the outside of the whistle, and if we, um, we do still get a good whistle out of it. So that's good. That means I can strengthen up all of this. Also, this is all just in regular, not flexible uh, PLA because I'm not wasting a ton of TPU on just prototyping test chassis and things. Uh, yeah, and then yes, the other thing that, about the chassis is that it has a motor block out the back here, which is kind of hard for me to show you with everything else going on. There you go. There it is. Uh, it has holes for two different N20s to drive the back wheel. I obviously going into a beta weight class, I don't want to just put wheels directly on the N20 because they're going to get hit and it's just going to annihilate that. So hopefully by gear driving this back wheel and having it on a bigger bolt, uh, we actually survive a little bit better. Uh, I don't know, fingers crossed. Uh, but the problem with this is that this is currently overweight as it currently exists. Like even just in this form, without the other side wheel, without the electronics, without the battery, we're at 460 grams, which is too much for a one pound class. And speaking of prototypes, there is way more to this story. Uh, so yes, I ended up printing four prototypes in PLA. This is multiple days worth of printing at this point because I've just been tweaking settings and changing things around and trying to get things to line up and also make weight. So some of these are printed not quite as heavy as I want the TPU to be printed and some of them are actually printed at full settings just because T uh, PLA and TPU are around about the same density which means that when printing these things at the actual settings I'm going to use for the final version, we end up with something equivalently heavy to the final version, so I get a good idea of where I'm sitting on weight. Uh, now a couple of these had a couple of different issues. Uh, these are this way around. Uh, so the first up was we had a brush, the brush motor. This is a fairly cheap one from AliExpress. Thankfully all metal gears up through here, you can get a yellow version of this, it's all plastic gear, which definitely is not a good idea for the beta weight class, but that is going to help out, uh, and that's going to be the thing swinging the hammer. I have changed up a couple of times the orientation and the angle of it just to get a good swing out of the thing. I also originally had a secondary pillar with a bolt to kind of shore everything up, but weight is a problem. Uh, and these two versions did also use the same kind of style of bolt-in N20 mount, which I can't, I don't know, I'm gonna have to, oh, I can pull that out. Uh, so they're kind of like a V-block N20, where the whole idea is that the N20 sits here and here, and directly drive the output shaft, like, so, the output shaft goes here, and then each one touches that directly, and then these were supposed to get bolted in here, uh, although the different version that didn't have the giant, giant M6 bearing in it. Anyway, uh, that's where those two were going to go, and I kind of stuck with this idea for a little while, but then realized that this giant mass sticking up here is going to get in the way of having a lid, and having everything kind of sit down nicely. So, the final iteration, the final prototype, this guy over here, which has actually got hammer arms on it, uh, and a brand new hammer that we'll talk about in a second, uses N20s that are in line with each other. Now this, I am not super sure about. I've been talking to some other builders who think it should be okay, uh, but it is going to be a little bit experimental, where these two drive each other, and then the output shaft, which is a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner, and a silicon tire this time, which is actually weight controlled effectively. Um, yeah, these guys slide in together like that, and that makes up my little drive pod. So technically only this gear is outputting to the wheel, which means that if this gear goes down, we are gonna have a problem. Uh, but it does mean that the N20s are easier to get in and don't have to have weird geometry, and I can put a nice, easy cover over the top of the whole robot. Yeah, so that is pretty cool for that uh, test print. This is actually, I think, the final version of the chassis, almost. Uh, there is another little thing we'll talk about in just a second, but 
then we've also got the hammer here. So this here is the new iteration of the hammer. Uh, the old iteration of the hammer was like this with the whistles in the head. However, messing around with one of these, I just like smacked one on the table and it broke at the join point where the hammer where the whistles interact with the actual hammer arm. So I went deep, deep down the hole of designing whistles. And I actually even designed this tiny, tiny little one, which I want to use at some point because it's ridiculously high pitched. Um, yeah, but it also takes so little air that even the small bellows actually can't push and like can't push air through here because there's so much resistance. Uh, but I have now designed my own geometry for a whistle, which is what this new hammerhead here is. You can kind of sort of see, if at an angle just right, you can see the whistle chambers in there, and I have designed those myself. So these bellows now push into a chamber that go, narrows down to speed the air up, then it hits the whistle and exhausts out here, top and bottom, just like that. Uh, which is really, really cool because with my own design, it can, means I can get more fancy and complicated with the design around the outside of it. And also I can print these in TPU pretty easily. So that's it, time to print the actual chassis for this. Now I'm gonna print this in a brand new filament to me, a transparent bright pink TPU uh, provided to me by 3D Printworks, my 3D printing sponsor. It is very, very cool material. Unfortunately, I had some issues printing it. Turned out that printing something for the very first time, uh, I did not get the bed adhesion right. Uh, and it came out okay, but there was some warping on the back that I had to glue the print down to a piece of tape that was stuck to the bed so that it didn't warp too badly. Uh, and I had just got some kind of artifacts in the print from doing that. And the front forks have kind of warped a little bit, but this thing is solid. Like I have printed seven walls and like 35% infill in here, and it has come out really, really well, especially the horns up the front here, which uh, have slots in them for googly eyes, which is gonna come up in a minute. Uh, but yeah, this is printed pretty solidly despite uh, warping kind of badly. Um, and I also put in the back of it a 3D Printworks logo as a thank you to them for sponsoring this video, especially because uh, after mentioning that I'd had some issues with uh, getting the chassis to print, 3D Printworks has actually come through for me and printed two whole new chassis for me. And these things are exceptional. They have like just a glassy finish on the bottom, no curling, even on the like really sharp points here. I love these. And both of these are also in a transparent TPU. These things are going to, well, hopefully, fingers crossed, survive in the beta weight class. I've never personally run TPU in the beta weight class, but I know that a bunch of people in, at NHRL have, and they run similar settings to these. Uh, Tom of Pause Fame has helped me out with what settings to use for TPU, and I put those through to 3D Printworks, and they printed these in that same uh, level of setting, and oh, they've just come out so well. And it means I've got spares. I've got spares for the event, which I am very, very happy about. Uh, and then of course we've also printed hammers too. So we've got a TPU hammer with a PLA hub just so that the TPU isn't the thing that is being pushed around by the two very small flats. In my experience, TPU flats uh, on a shaft will round out fairly quickly. So it's better to have something large with a lot of contact area in PLA to then go into the uh, the TPU to do that. And this has come out super well. So I also, I'm getting lids for these two at the moment, but we're gonna go ahead and put together my pink version of this. I'll build these as spares off camera. Uh, but yeah, this guy gets mounted up in here and then we've got the hammer. Ah! And again, with whistles in here, which, one of them works better than the other uh, because TPU is a little bit tricky to print with and whistle geometry is a little bit finicky. Uh, I might even reprint these uh, in a black because I know the print settings pretty well for the black and so I can get that to work a little bit better. But these work pretty well. Um, and definitely are going to squeak with big, big bellows on them. That's the other upgrade from uh, squeak mini here or regular squeak is this is running the tiny little bellows 
which is still pretty good. But with these bigger bellows on here, we're just gonna have so much more airflow through the whistle. But I think that's enough talk now about the development of the chassis, which has taken uh, a little longer than I intended it to take, but that is totally fine. Uh, these things definitely do happen. I now need to get all the electronics into one of the squeaks, uh, just so we can actually give this thing a run around and make sure it is all going to work. All right, we are getting very, very close now. There's just a couple of little bits left to do. The first one is the hammer. So the way this whole robot is gonna work basically is that the hammer has to go on last, uh, mostly because otherwise the lid just doesn't fit, which is a bit of a pain, uh, but that is just the way this goes. And it just, the, the, the hammer's not too bad to put on, but I do need to put the squeakers back in here. I've glued this all together now and it does need the squeaker or the bellows from the squeakers back in, which is actually somewhat difficult to do because there is a little recess in here that I have to squeeze this last bellow section into. The only way I've found to do it so far is with a tiny screwdriver just kind of like slowly sitting there tweaking it round, but that will do in half a second. The other thing to do is a dustpan, but that might not be done today. I actually need to work out how much weight we're at because that is a big thing. 397, awesome. So I've got basically 50 grams for a dustpan. That should give me, I think a two mil or a three mil HDPE dustpan. That will be absolutely plenty uh, for what I'm trying to do with this thing. I mean, I don't really think it's gonna have the pushing power to push a beetle around, so we're just gonna have to uh, try, basically. And so the dustpan will help a little bit, but it's not gonna uh, do a whole lot, I don't think. And there we have it, uh, Squeakimus Maximus basically complete. I will do the dustpan off camera because it's gonna be a little bit of finicky work trying to get the weight to be exactly what I need it to be, but uh, it does indeed work. Uh, the squeak isn't as good as it could be. I think this is the wrong print. As mentioned, uh, squeak like whistle geometries are a little bit weird and a little bit finicky and you need to print them perfectly for them to work. Uh, so like for example, this is a second print of this same whistle and one of the sides Does nothing at all and the other side Works perfectly. So uh, Yeah, I think this one the actual whistles in here just aren't quite right uh, It may end up being that the hammer arm gets printed in a different color. I found this transparent TPU a little bit uh, Difficult to work with just because I haven't got the settings for it yet 
the black TPU I have had settings for for ages and so I can print that really quite easily so I'll probably end up printing at least one of these in the black just to get like I think it's the sharpness needed right at the point where the air splits over a vein basically I think that's the thing that causes the whistle to work well not work in that particular case um, and then I have some other ones as well that are printed uh, by 3D Printworks, my sponsor, and these ones work pretty well too. So these uh, should go really, really well on the bright green chassis just here, which is gonna be a backup or a spare. Um, and I've got a couple of those because putting these into a beta weight class, I think they're going to take a horrendous amount of damage, but that's fine. We've got multiple spare copies of things, so we should be able to uh, fight more than once at the very least. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, uh, give it a like or something. Also, I as mentioned, I will be at NHRL in the States and I am going to get a chance to meet a whole bunch of really cool American builders, including Seth from Just Cause Robotics. I put up a community post a day or so ago uh, asking if you had any questions for him because we're gonna do a little like Q&A kind of interview each other type thing. If you've got any questions, either leave them in the comments down below or jump over to that community post and leave a comment there. And the ones that I like from that list, I will ask Seth along with some other questions as well that I'm kind of interested in. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video and I will see you in the next one.